Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, September 16th. Tesla has removed its cheapest Model Y trim from the online configurator in the US. It also happens to be the cheapest Model Y. At times, Tesla has grayed out variations, making them inaccessible, but this time it has been completely removed. The trim was also referred to as the Model Y all-wheel drive, not the standard range and not the long range. And sometimes it was simply called the Model Y from Texas. There's a lot of speculation going around about the move. It comes as rumors have arrived that Tesla has shut down production of the Model Y in Texas entirely. It could be that Tesla has shifted all resources to the Cybertruck manufacturing, which would include the 4680 cell, which is used in the Texas Model Y. We'll have to see if it's actually going to the pickup truck, and we may find out with a delivery announcement any day now, any hour now. Tesla's little-known auto bidder product has already made over $330 million for energy investors. Electrek was the first to report on Tesla's auto bidder platform back in 2020. It's a real-time trading and control platform for energy assets, like Tesla's power packs, power walls, and mega packs, optimized through machine learning to better use and more directly monetize those assets. It's an important part of Tesla Energy, the division that Elon Musk once said could outpace vehicles in terms of revenue. Back in 2021, we reported that over 1.2 gigawatt hours of energy storage was under management by AutoBidder, and that num number has now been updated to 7 gigawatt hours. It's an impressive amount of energy capacity and profits for a relatively short amount of time for a brand new product. Tesla has started selling a powered liftgate retrofit for the Model 3 for 800 bucks. Tesla did not originally include a powered liftgate on the Model 3 when it first came out, instead opting for a traditional pneumatic extender with no option for power. Last year, Tesla started selling this retrofit powered kit in the Chinese market, and now here it is in the States. The retrofit is available to any Model 3 produced prior to 2021 with a manual liftgate. As is the case with many other upgrades offered on Tesla shop, the price includes installation at a local Tesla service center. As far as we can tell, it hasn't shown up in Europe or Australia or New Zealand. Perhaps Tesla is working on the right-hand drive version for the liftgate. According to recent data from Experian, Rivian is outpacing the pack as U.S. registrations continue to rise. As of July, Rivian has scored 18,359 vehicles. Rivian has placed eighth in terms of U.S. registrations from January through July, with 2.8% of the overall EV market, which is impressive for a startup. Despite strong growth in EV sales, many other EV startups in the U.S., like Lucid, VinFast, and Fisker, are struggling to find their market. Lucid had 3,789 registrations through July, VinFast scored 170, and Fisker is up to 37. This confirms what was seen coming by many EV analysts and followers alike. Last month, Wedbush analyst Dan Ives said that he sees Rivian as, quote, one of the core EV players over the next decade. He added that demand looks strong and visibility is improving into 2024. You will soon be able to lease a Rivian electric vehicle. Rivian CEO RJ Scarring spoke about leasing and how it could unlock more pricing incentives for customers. Scarring says that Rivian's market-leading residual values will continue to lead exceptionally strong leasing packages. Now, when asked about the Inflation Reduction Act application, the Rivian leader explained, quote, it works great for leasing. And he added, $7,500 does work. Now, Scarring also added that in their site in Georgia, where its next generation series will be built, it is close to having all grading completed. Early next year, the building will be going up while the company will start filling it in with equipment through the end of 2024. The United Auto Workers Union has begun a strike against all three major U.S. automakers, with about 12,000 workers currently on strike, but the potential can grow up to 146,000 if this continues. Now, this doesn't entirely affect electric vehicles, Actually, it doesn't affect electric vehicles at all today because none of those auto workers that are on strike are actually producing electric vehicles intently. Of the three plants, the only ones that are doing anything electrified is the Stellantis plant in Ohio, which builds a Jeep Wrangler, including the 4xE, which is a plug-in hybrid. But essentially, this has the power to snowball very quickly out of control 
to the point where it could very much affect Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis in their efforts to produce their electric vehicles. And now that it's come up, with fewer gas vehicles being built, this could be a short-term benefit for electric vehicles, but really at what cost? Realistically, this situation could change at any moment, and at Electrek, we hope for the best in negotiations between all the parties. If we're going to have an electric vehicle revolution, they've got to be built in the first place. The head of Jeep Europe, Antonella Bruno, confirmed the new electric Jeep Recon will sit alongside the Wrangler, but it will be positioned differently within the lineup. Bruno explained, quote, The Recon in Europe will be a white space car, and added, quote, It's a unique car, very boxy, and very capable. It will sit in a lower part of the market segment to the Wrangler. Now, according to Autocar, this electric SUV, which will be available in, in the UK, will feature nearly 600 horsepower with around 373 miles of range. Hopefully, we can see more electric Jeep representation in the States, as the European rep also added, quote, At a global level, we want to be the 4x4 leader in electrification. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Dean McManus says, I don't like this latest trend of Chinese and Japanese EV automakers listing upcoming battery technology by saying that it is capable of 400 or 600 or 900 miles of range. It is a virtually useless spec and hides the battery energy density, weight, and capacity. For any given range, the automaker could always provide a bigger battery pack to get more range without it being more efficient. Yes, Dean, I am inclined to agree. I think that range is such a silly number to forecast, and it has people believing it's a real specification for a car that hasn't been made yet. I think that the many times that advertisers and executives hide behind meaningless words really boggles the mind, at least mine. Developments that are, quote, exciting or revolutionary or marketing that's done by a thesaurus that only has adjectives inside. Oh, I spend a large part of my night up awake thinking about this nonsense. But a lot of folks don't really realize that range is a number that is both critical to a vehicle and simultaneously impossible to pin down. Now, hopefully the greater public can grasp the concept soon enough because there's a lot of companies out there who are willing to take advantage of that naivete. Or is that naivete? Naivete. I don't know. I don't speak French. But in the meantime, thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great baguette.